Hello and welcome to this edition of Assembly Calendar. I'm Matt Vischer. Our guest today is New York State Assemblyman Mark Johns, who represents the 135th Assembly District of Monroe County. Thank you very much for joining us today for this edition of Assembly Calendar. Uh, this is a post-budget highlight wrap-up, if you will. Uh, the last time we spoke with uh, Mr. Johns was prior to the passage of the 2015-16 state budget. So we're going to get his overall thoughts uh, uh, on uh, the budget itself and right. the good, the bad, the ugly, if you will, the coin right. that phrase. Uh, right, yeah, that's what people have said this year. It's the good, the bad, and the ugly. And uh, to start with the good, I think maybe the main thing that we did was we increased state aid to schools uh, by $1.3 billion. And that was more than the governor had suggested. So uh, that was a good thing. And uh, we also, uh, in that process, eliminated some of the gap elimination, which was uh, instituted back in uh, Governor Patterson's days in 2010 uh, to deal with the state fiscal crisis that we had. They cut uh, state aid to schools, and we've restored some of that over the years. And that was a high low need district type of uh, issue there, was it not? A, a lot of it was. Yeah, it, it was, but um, you know, state funding is state funding, and uh, we are up to about $22 billion a year going to schools and state aid, and uh, that's a good thing because uh, we've instituted in the past a 2% property tax cap, mm -hmm. and the more money that uh, school districts and municipalities have, the better they're able to stay under the 2% gap. Now, with the, um, the closing of that GEA, that is the eventual goal, is it not? It is. You won't get back pay. You won't get uh, dollars for... Uh, money that you've lost in the past, but we may be able to bring it up to a uh, standard that is commensurate with what had gone on before. What were some of the other t um, key components of the budget that the folks at home might uh, uh, feel somewhat of an impact from? Well, we did put more money into infrastructure, uh, but not as much as I would have liked to have seen. Uh, some people may remember that there was a lot of uh, Wall Street settlements uh, and uh, big banks and Wall Street uh, firms had to come up with about $5.4 billion in fines. And that was a one-shot money, uh, basically. It was included in the budget, but it's not going to be recurring. And uh, I had initially thought everybody was on board with putting the money into infrastructure. Uh, back in the Rochester, Monroe County area, we've seen a lot of bridges that are deteriorating. Some have to be closed down for minimal repairs. And uh, that money was supposed to go into fixing roads and bridges, widening some roads that need to be done. And unfortunately, a lot of it's gone down to New York City area, and a big chunk of it's going to go towards that Tappan Sea Bridge. The infrastructure issue uh, is always a concern because when you want to bring businesses to New York State and, sure. and um with the high costs of, of doing business here and the high taxes of, of living in this state, certainly it would seem to me that you'd want to have some smooth roads and, and bridges and not really be concerned about right. uh, the, f the failing potential infrastructure right. issue. Well, we um, have that new phrase, uh, New York State open for business. And uh, when site planners want to come in, they want to make sure the infrastructure is good. And we're not just talking roads and bridges. We're talking water lines. We're talking sewer lines. And if you want to set up a business, you want to be able to make sure you have all those amenities so you can produce your product and then get your product out to market. And if you're not able to do that or some other state can do it better, we have tough winters up here. This past February was the coldest February in history. <laughs> a lot of infrastructure took a real beating. And in order to be able to rectify that, we have to put some money into it. It's not the same as if you live in the Carolinas or Florida. You take these bank settlements, and mm -hmm. the state views it as this large pot of money right. heading toward Albany. And then, of course, everyone wants a part of that, and, oh, they, yeah. and they start to think about how to divvy up the cash, so to right. speak. Uh, it's not all that surprising that uh, the bulk of the bank settlement money is heading downstate because yeah. there always seems to be an issue uh, between upstate and downstate and upstate not getting a lot of uh, financial uh, help uh, yeah. and it, most of it heading downstate. Yeah, that is, uh, that's been a problem for years and you know we've always had that upstate, downstate divide. Uh, I think a lot of the money will go into MTA type projects, Metro Transit Authority, uh, Tappan Zee Bridge. Unfortunately, with this Tappan Zee Bridge, if we don't put money into it and we decided 
I shouldn't say we, it wasn't my decision, but uh, when they decide they want to build a new bridge, that is a $4 billion bridge. Mm -hmm. And we are only getting five point something on the uh, bank settlements. So it, it, only about 1.3 billion is going towards that bridge. Where's the rest of the money gonna come from? And what I'm worried about is they're gonna increase tolls on the throughway, so people that are just going between Rochester and Buffalo and Syracuse are gonna pay more for a bridge that maybe they've never even driven over. Mm. So, you know, that's, that's a problem. The budget uh, was agreed upon between the three branches of government, as yeah. uh, most folks know. The, uh, the governor is at the table, the Senate majority is at the table, and mm -hmm. the Assembly majority as well. And they mm -hmm. basically um, come in and they hash out their own agreements right. and they come up with a plan. Part of that finalized plan uh, for the budget uh, was a pension forfeiture agreement, yeah. which apparently fell through the cracks at the last moment. Uh, yeah. Talk to us about that. Well, uh, I've been on that bill. I, I'm a co-sponsor of the bill, and uh, basically it says what I think most of the voters in New York State agree with, that if you commit a felony in the commission of your job, you should lose your pension. And uh, to be honest with you, we've got a number of former senators and assembly people in prison right now <laughs> building up a pensions in their, in their bank accounts which they'll wind up collecting when they get out. And uh, that's pretty much a, a, a stain on what goes on in New York State. I mean, just this week, we got another assemblyman saying he's gonna plead guilty next week, and he'll still get his pension. And when you commit crimes, uh, most people don't think that you should get a pension. There's a lot of people don't even believe that you should get a pension for being an elected official, much less get a pension for being a corrupt elected official. Mm. So, you know, that was taken out of the budget. It's supposed to come up in a, a, a separate bill. Do you know what happened? Why it fell through the cracks? Well, you know what? When they say there's three men in a room, that's what they mean. We don't really get in there to hear how the negotiations are going. But, uh, you know, there was a recent poll. Um, just a couple days ago, it was uh, maybe last week it was released. And the poll showed that people believe that New York State is the most corrupt state in the union. Um, you know, that's a serious problem. We talk about infrastructure, but would you want to come to a state that has an image of corruption? Mm. And uh, y there, there's a lot of things that go on. As we said, the budget has the good, the bad, and the ugly. And, uh, you know, we'll talk about some of the ugly stuff, but, uh, you know, there was something hidden in the budget that most people don't know about. It was called uh, Legislative Pay Commission. Mm. And uh, when people find out about that, they're not going to be happy. And what exactly is that? So the, the legislature, oh, mm. who's responsible for creating the commission and what is the commission going to be charged with doing? Well, in the past, uh, the way the Constitution, I believe, is written is if you want to vote a pay increase for the state legislature, you have to take the vote and the pay increase does not take effect till the next term. Uh, traditionally, they've always done it after they've been reelected in a lame duck session, uh, which I think is, you know, an improper way to do it. If people want a pay raise, which I wouldn't vote for, but they should vote for it and then let the voters decide come November 16th or, yeah, November uh, 2016, how they feel about the members voting themselves a big pay increase. With this pay commission, it's going to be uh, a, a commission of selected people the uh, appointees appointees by the governor mm -hmm. the majority leader in the senate and the um, the speaker of the assembly and i, I wonder how they're going to vote well exactly <laughs> you know you're, you these are political appointees right. which are appointed <laughs> no pressure to a, there yeah you're appointed to a commission to decide how big the pay raise should be for the legislators and this is the worst part about it uh, their uh, findings as to how big the pay raise should be will not come back until November 15th, 2016, 10 days after everybody's safely reelected. Uh, so you're going to find out what your pay raise is after you've been reelected. So are you saying at this point that this is pretty much a done deal, that legislators, lawmakers will be receiving a pay raise at some point? I don't know how big it will be. Over the next couple of years? Uh, it, well, it'll be effective January of 17. That's and, a done deal at this point? Uh, well, yes, I don't know what the 
I don't know how big it'll be mm -hmm. because that's what the commission's going to decide. And we'll all be surprised and shocked when we find out how big it is on November 15th after the election. Now, it is important to note, I do believe the last time the legislature received an, an increase was in 1999. Right. Um, but some have argued that uh, how much legislators are making currently is just too much as it is and should be scaled back. Right. There are people that say that maybe we spend a little bit too much time down in Albany. You know, I have uh, some ideas that we could save money on. How about a two-year budget cycle? We come down here in our first year, the odd year, like now, and we come up with a two-year budget. That way schools and nonprofits and everybody will know exactly what they're going to get for the next two years. And then when we come back in our second year of the term, we could cut our session down to three or maybe four months at the most. We'd save $100 million in per diems and uh, mileage through a tolls, and we could use that money, give it to schools or some other worthwhile thing. And I do believe that you're also in favor of um, consolidating the legislative legislature and no. making it more of a unicameral type of... Uh, uh, we could certainly do that. I mean, we could uh, just use the Senate only. It's roughly 50-50, or we could uh, just have the Assembly, just have 99 seats and... Uh, say cut the state legislature in half that would save another hundred million back to pension forfeiture and the whole idea of increasing transparency in albany mm -hmm. which has been an ongoing concern for many years yeah. uh, that uh, bills are um, uh, introduced uh, they go to the majority committees yeah. uh, where they're hashed out mm -hmm. but oftentimes what happens is the committees uh, that are that the majorities control mm -hmm. hold the minorities' bills in committee right. and don't allow them to reach the floor for a vote. And I know right. you have been a proponent of uh, increasing um, or allowing bills to come to the floor for a vote. Each yeah, member. no doubt. Yeah, I, I believe that, you know, at, at a minimum, every member should be allowed to bring one bill to the floor for a debate, discussion, and then an up or down vote. And I'm talking about one bill every two years. Keep in mind, the New York State Assembly authors more bills than the U.S. House of Representatives, more than double. And we only vote on less than 10% of the bills we author. So bills like the, you know, the folks back home would like to see voted on, like term limits, pension forfeiture uh, for corrupt politicians. These bills, for some reason, year after year, never come up for a vote. And, uh, you know, we vote on a lot of things like gambling casinos and stuff that really aren't going to help the state that much. But important issues like two-year budget cycles, referendum to allow the people back home to vote on issues if we're not willing to do it. These are real reform ideas, but for some reason they never come up for a vote. And I'm for the SOLE Act, the single opportunity to legislate equally. Let's let every member bring their signature piece of legislation to the floor. We'll have a debate and a discussion and let it vote up or down on its merits. There was some uh, brief period of optimism when there was a change in leadership earlier this year yeah. with the Assembly Speaker. Um, some would say that was a very short window. Has that window pretty much closed at this point in terms of, of real substantial reform, in your opinion? Well, um, I'm not willing to say the door is closed. You know, I'm willing to work with the new Speaker. Um, I have ideas that are really nonpartisan. No one ever says, you know, Mark Johns is a far right or far left, uh, you know, a politician. I'm right in the middle where I think 60, 70, 80 percent of Americans are. I believe that people would like to see real reform here and in Washington. But we need to lead by example. We can't say, well, the Senate ought to do something or those guys in Washington ought to straighten things out. We ought to straighten our own house right here in Albany, straighten it out, and then we can point the finger at other people and tell them how to do their business. Always a pleasure to see you, Assemblyman Mark Johns. Thank mm -hmm. you very much for joining us. If you'd Good like to reach here. out to the Assemblyman, you can do so uh, by contacting his district office at 268 Fairport Village Landing. That's in Fairport. Zip code is 11450. You can call the Assemblyman at 585-223-9130, or you can always reach out to him on Facebook. He's available on Facebook. Thank you very much for joining us today for this edition of Assembly Calendar. Until next time, take care.